Hello guys, in this video I want to show you 10 to-dos after the installation of Debian. For this video it's completely irrelevant which desktop you are using. You could use Cinnamon, Gnome, KDE, XFCE and of course all others. So I would say let's start right through. At first we have to ensure that there is no more welcome screen so i hit next here choose my keyboard layout i want to disable the location services and you could also connect very easily to google nextcloud or microsoft accounts and um, now we can start using just right away it's completely irrelevant which desktop you are on because i would say let's start right through with the real first thing that is checking that our CD-ROM sources of Debian are not enabled at the current moment. For that, I type in software and updates in my menu. And here you can choose your download server. For example, you could choose in my case, the server for Ireland, for example, I type in my password. And if you want, you could also enable the contrib repositories for more options to download and install right away. I would personally choose this one. Also head over to other software and make sure that there is no CD-ROM source enabled. In my case, this is right the case. So I can now close the software and updates window. And because I have changed something, I have to reload my package manager. So I would say, let's do this. Just a small hint, in my case, the server of Ireland didn't work quite well. So I moved back to main server and on the other software, I removed the additional Ireland entries. Now we have fixed our APT sources and let us come to the next point, which is unattended upgrades. I personally highly recommend to enable unattended upgrades for your Debian system. So very important security updates are installed automatically. For that, I open up my terminal here and retype the following command, sudo apt install unattended upgrades and type in my password. There are no signs while typing and I press enter again. If sudo apt update doesn't work, just check if you could get root by typing this command su space minus and then you could try to log in to your Debian machine as an administrator. This is dependable if you set an additional admin password or not for a simple desktop system. My personal opinion is that one single password for your user and no additional administrator password is completely enough. After the installation is complete, we have to ensure that the unattended upgrades are working properly. So I type in dpkg reconfigure for that we need sudo in front of it and then we can type in unattended upgrades. I press enter and then we could choose automatically download and install stable updates. I choose with my arrow keys yes and press the enter key again and now 20 auto upgrades is now created. This isn't present by default after the installation of unattended upgrades. So make sure to don't miss this command. If you're using an NVIDIA card, then you have to install your NVIDIA driver. For that, we have to ensure in our etc apt sources.list that next to main also non-free firmware contrib and also non-free are enabled. This is at this point not the case. So before we are moving forward for the installation of our NVIDIA driver, we head back to software and updates. And in here I can enable the non-DFSG compatible software. So we see here non-free, we have to enable this for our proprietary NVIDIA drivers if you want to use them. I have now enabled them. I click close. Yeah, I hit reload and this takes a moment. After that, we can just type in sudo apt install NVIDIA driver. And also we have to install firmware misc non-free. Just do this if you have an NVIDIA card installed in your system. On my system, this isn't the case. So I don't have to execute this command. After that, let us care about our firewall. 
by default Debian comes with no firewall, but I personally recommend you installing the program GUFW and then I can type enter. This is okay. I type enter again and then everything is working. And after GUFW is installed, we can search for firewall in our menu. And here we see the firewall configuration. I type in my password and here we can enable the firewall. This is highly recommended if you are on public places with your computer. If your PC is always at home, then your router should just be fine. But if you want to make sure, then just enable this. So now I can close my firewall settings and let us care about additional software. If we look into our desktop environment, in my case, GNOME software is installed. Depending on other desktop environments, you could, for example, install Discover. This is the software manager of the KDE platform. If you're using XFCE, Cinnamon and Mate, then you should choose GNOME software. You can also go with Synaptic, for example, if you want it old school. But I'm going here with GNOME software and I also want to set up Flatpak for my Debian system. So I have a wider range of applications which I can directly install. For that, I type in the command sudo apt install GNOME software and GNOME software plugin Flatpak. I press enter and after some time, all of these are installed. We see Flatpak and GNOME software plugin Flatpak is installed. And now we can check if Flatpak is installed by just typing in Flatpak. And if we see something like this, then it's okay. Or we could choose Flatpak minus minus version. And this one looks good. But we are not finished with our Flatpak setup. For that, I open up the flathub.org because we need a place from where to install new Flatpaks. And we can do this via our Flathub. So I select Setup Flathub, head over to my Debian instructions, and we need to add the Flathub repository. So I copy this text and right click and select paste in my terminal. Maybe I type in sudo for that. I press enter and then we have our flat hub added. So we have now access to about two or three thousand very cool Linux applications and the best we can just install them from our graphical software manager. But for that, yeah, we have to restart everything. So I select restart now. This takes a moment. And after that, we can install some cool flat packs. Also, let us come to another point. Let us head over to LibreOffice. Yeah, LibreOffice is a great office suite, which is open source. I highly recommend it. And I personally recommend you to also alter the view. You can do this under view and then select user interface. Here you can select, for example, the tapped UI variant. I select apply to all. And then we have a, in my opinion, more functional LibreOffice UI. It is a bit more structured, like for example, Microsoft Office. But in my opinion, this tapped layout is really good. If you don't want to use it, then head over to your settings menu and select user interface and go back to the standard toolbar. I also recommend you to head over to your settings and select options in here and we can adjust our view. Here in view, we can select our theme. I personally recommend you the Colibris theme. So I head over to this, select apply. Then we have the default LibreOffice theme. If you are using LibreOffice across many devices, then this Colibri thing is, in my opinion, the best and widely adapted theme. This is it to LibreOffice and let us just reboot our Debian machine. So I select restart and if we look at our restart, we see there are many, many text messages and I want to get rid of them. So for that, I log into my system again, head over to my uh, terminal and type in the following command sudo apt install Plymouth and Plymouth 
themes. I press enter and type in my password again and we are installing this guy. And we also have to make sure that our startup animation is displayed. So for that, I'm typing in sudo nano slash etc slash default slash grub. And in here, I add into the parenthesis riot and then splash. And then I press control O, enter, and then control X, and then sudo update dash grab. And this looks right good. And in the end, I hit reboot or sudo reboot for Debian. Just have a look if it works. Yeah. And here you see a cool Debian 12 startup screen. So this looks a bit nicer, I would say. So let's log in again and head over to our desktop. I personally don't like the default Debian background, but you can change it. Just right click it and select change background. These background images can differ from your installed desktop environment, but if you don't find any attracting backgrounds here, I recommend you unsplash.com. Let's head over to wallpapers or nature and just have a look for a nice background. I'm going now with this background. So I hit download free, just select your appropriate resolution. I am heading with medium here. I close this one and in my Iperion settings, I select add picture and head over to my downloads folder and choose this one. And now, yeah, we have a very nice image, but yeah, it's of course just cosmetical. But what isn't cosmetical? Let us head over to our terminal. I recommend you by installing some very useful standard tools I'm installing on every Linux machine. So for that, I type in sudo apt install vim. This is a, in my opinion, better text editor for the terminal. Also ncdu, which is a terminal disk space analyzer. Also htop, this is the cool hacker screen, I would say. Git is also very useful and pwgen for generating passwords very, very quickly is great. So I type in enter, type in my password and let us install these things. So if you want, for example, to generate a secure password in seconds, just hit pwgen n20 and then we see very nice passwords which we can just copy and paste somewhere. That's just a small great app and there are many more, but this is it. In my case, I'm on GNOME and on GNOME, we have some GNOME games. I don't want to have them installed. So I type in sudo apt remove GNOME games. So I press enter and we uninstall this one. And then we hit sudo apt auto remove and I press enter when everything is correctly written. So this looks good. I press enter again, and then all our GNOME games are removed from our system. And we have now much more space in our menu. This looks quite good. So in the end, I recommend you a very useful tool, which is written by me. It's called Linux Assistant. Linux Assistant is a daily Linux helper with a powerful integrated search and some other very useful features. For example, a very quick security check or also, for example, the ability to install your multimedia codecs. And this doesn't only work for Debian. It also works for many other distributions out there. So I just hit download deb we can't install it right now maybe let us install g debby it is called like this i press enter there comes a lot of stuff with it but it's okay for me i press enter again after some time this is installed and just try again let's head over to our file manager right click this one and select open with and then we select the JDebye package installer and I select always use for this file type. It's okay for me. I select open and then we see this one and I can now install the deb package. So this is now installed. Then let us head over to our menu and here we see the Linux assistant just started right away and I'm closing everything. So I select next. My Debian system is correct. 
you could activate a hotkey if you want. And there's also some instructions to set up your computer very fast, which is for example, activating FlatHub, installing, configuring unattended upgrades and so on. So this is quite worth it if you're installing a new Linux machine and you don't want to do all this repetitive stuff. This comes in quite handy, but I skip this for now and hit let's start. And for example, I type in multimedia codex. So I just hit this, type in my password and then now the multimedia codecs are installing. And this is now installing the VLC player and libav codec extra, for example. We could also just install it by the terminal, but two of you remembers such commands like this one. I personally do not. And also this command differs on every Linux distribution. So such things are quite handy next to many other features in this app. It's completely free and open source. I don't earn any money with it. It's just for fun and I helped already a lot of people with it. So just give it a try. So yeah, this was it for this video. These were my 10 to do's after installing Debian on your machine. If you want a small Debian crash course, just have a look into the video description. In this one, I show you how to install and set up Debian 12 with a very sleek cinnamon desktop. So just have a look for it. I've also done a video for Debian KDE or many other videos. So to don't miss any further videos, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get even more useful videos in the future. We are releasing weekly new videos about Linux and open source. So we would be happy to see you in a next one. So yeah, this was it for today. Have fun. Bye.